very special voice on the show and this is exactly as Zappa promised, consensus over BJP's return could be a key risk. That's the word coming in from H. Name Kumar of IFL Institutional Equities. Nikunj was just chatting with him about the market trends, corporate governance concerns and where he's seeing value in the market right now. Almost every uh, zephologist, every political pundit and which is what markets also are believing because my feedback from all investors say so. Almost 95% of the investors now believe that the current administration will come back uh, but uh, uh, in the form of a coalition. So uh, BJP winning uh, between 200 to 220 seats uh, uh, and plus uh, you know a uh, few other parties coming together uh, is the base case assumption. Now if the final outcome is radically different from what this base case assumption is at this point in time then probably you know the markets can, will react on uh, either side. So uh, uh, one other thing is that the market is also believing that uh, uh, the current prime minister will return as a prime minister in the new uh, government as well. So uh, these two are uh, you know the kind of common assumptions at the common expectation at this point in time which is in the price. In the run up to the elections you know once you know opinion polls start to come out more news flow uh, starts to uh, you know come flow through maybe you know these expectations could change but uh, this is uh, what the current expectations that have been built into the uh, 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 market prices. I will like to draw your attention to what governance uh, you know compromise we have seen with some of the large companies. The USP for Indian uh, stocks always has been that they are, you know India has got well run, when, well managed, well governed companies. But when you see a governance, governance you know standard being compromised by a Sun Pharma or for that matter what SL group promoters have done. What do you think it leaves on the table for an investor because the investor was coming to India and buying expensive stocks because he was getting this satisfaction and this assurance that the governance standards will not be compromised unlike China. You know a large part of the market has actually become uninvestable because of uh, either it is it being an SOE or it being uh, uh, it having certain governance related issues etc uh, etc. Et so with the result what has happened is that uh, uh, ownership is becoming narrower and as it becomes narrower you see uh, you know valuations expanding in this universe which is what has exactly happened last uh, 18 months while the trend was underway a lot of people investors believed that at some point in time uh, this trend will reverse and uh, value investors uh, will probably uh, you know uh, emerge as winners in the market but that has not happened simply because of the fact that uh, newer and newer risks have emerged uh, and uh, particularly after the ILF, ILNFS crisis and uh, the uh, uh, liquidity related worries that have crept in you know uh, the uh, you know risk uh, off mode uh, has uh, seen a further acceleration. So uh, you know the investors are now okay to take a valuation risk rather than take a earnings or a governance risk. Uh, you know this trend again is unlikely to change unless you see a big macro recovery. Uh, you know once investors start to get the conviction that uh, the economy is in uh, course for a broad based recovery and earnings uh, momentum is going to change for the better then what happens is that uh, uh, you know investors will believe okay these concerns are there these are all priced in and uh, if the underlying earnings momentum start to pick up some of these concerns will get automatically addressed because the earnings getting better cash flows improving etc etc. At this point in time that confidence is also not there and uh, therefore you know economic cycle picking up would be the first trigger uh, and the, uh, if uh, consensus earnings start to see upgrades in some of these stocks maybe investors come back but at this point in time as you rightly mentioned I think the choice is limited it is narrow 
and unfortunately it is unlikely to change and therefore you know valuation risk in a small pocket is uh, going to remain very high and if for any reason there is a broad based correction then uh, these uh, stocks will also uh, correct if for example if uh, the outcome of the elections are uh, uh, you know uh, so uh, uh, you know uh, negative uh, uh, from a perception point then in that case you know ultimately even these high uh, the richly valued narrow universe of stocks uh, will correct because then uh, foreign investors will generally give up uh, on uh, uh, India itself. I hope it doesn't happen but uh, that is one risk that we need to keep in mind. So you know we need to closely watch the situation as it stands today. My belief is that till elections nothing is going to change. Election outcome if it is in line with the market expectations people will uh, look for uh, the first policy document and then will probably take a call. Uh, the uh, expectations that got built in of a broader economic recovery in the last uh, four years has not yet happened. At some point in time the natural uh, you know the, the way in which cycles work you know at some point in time it will happen but there is no visibility as yet. Only when that happens you will see interest coming back to these stocks. So what is your understanding of the NBFC issue? What started with LNFS now there are other HFC names and other NBFCs which are you know getting affected with uh, what's happening to the asset liability mismatch and what is happening in large, largely in terms of mutual fund exposure. Are we in for a prolonged slowdown and uh, concerns for the entire HFC sector? See again if you see this is the classic uh, you know cycle where uh, when uh, uh, credit flow uh, uh, is abundant or liquidity is abundant, uh, interest rates are benign and in India particularly what happened because uh, a large part of the banking system went into PCA uh, that gave the opportunity for NBFCs to grow. Last 4-5 years these NBFC balance sheets have expanded uh, significantly more than what it should have normally uh, have had. So with the result what has happened is that we, the uh, growth uh, you know will have to taper off. Each of the companies will have to look at their ALM uh, will have to correct the ALM mismatches because the money at the shorter end is not going to be available anymore which would mean that with liability not being available as easily uh, you know and it comes at a cost as well uh, you know they will have to slow down growth as well. In a way it is very good I think it is a natural cleansing process which happens. So uh, these two years uh, you know uh, maybe a year I, I don't know how long it takes but uh, uh, the cleansing process will happen. So you will see 6 to 12 months uh, or maybe even up to 18 months where uh, you know uh, growth slows down significantly, uh, balance sheets get stronger, liability uh, side readjustment happens etc etc. Uh, the only risk that we need to closely watch out is how real estate prices behave, uh, uh, behaves. So if real estate prices, uh, I mean it's already we have seen a correction. If it uh, corrects a bit more it's fine but if for any reason if it corrects significantly more then that will add a new, new layer of risk. But uh, otherwise you know the core retail mortgages in general in India across cycles have been a uh, you know uh, have been a reasonably good uh, kind of uh, uh, asset uh, to own. Uh, so which is actually forms the bulk of the uh, HFC balance sheets. So again you have to view from on a case to case basis but my belief is that every company is uh, doing this adjustment at this point in time. Uh, they are realigning their balance sheet to both the uh, availability uh, I mean both to uh, to correct the ALM mismatches uh, to uh, ensure that uh, they have adequate liquidity uh, uh, and slow down growth as well as you know uh, trying to mitigate the risk on the asset side. So in terms of in portfolio composition 
are you of the view that one should stick it to defensives, private banks, maybe a combination of little bit of consumers for next three to six months and then take a view only after the elections? I think so. I think so. I don't think that uh, the winners of uh, uh, the last, uh, say, six to 12 months are uh, uh, like, I mean, the trend of the winners is likely to change. Uh, you know, people have been speculating about this for a long period in time. But as I said, uh, we are in, uh, in a kind of a risk off mode so far as regards India is concerned. Uh, so with investors not being able to price in uh, risks, uh, some of which are tail risks. So what happens is that investors tend to uh, 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 flee to safety. And, uh, you know, I, I, I completely agree with you that uh, that trend is uh, unlikely to change. But if somebody is ready to bet on the next new cycle, the next new theme, you know, for example, if somebody bought into NBFC stocks in 2014-15, you've certainly managed to hit a home run. If you bought private sector banks 8-10 years ago, you've hit a home run. If you bought consumer companies after the financial crisis of 2008, you've really made serious money. So forget what happens today, tomorrow, 3 months, 6 months. But someone who's ready to bet on a cycle based on the macros and the demographics from a 3-5 to five year view, where do you see earnings potential? Where do you think the compounders will emerge? So on a select basis, opportunities will definitely emerge in all the oversold stocks. There's no doubt about it. And uh, uh, in all the deep cyclicals and uh, uh, financials is also cyclical. In all the deep cyclicals, uh, one will uh, definitely find opportunities in the next few months, uh, you know, especially after elections if the outcome is not uh, uh, what the market is uh, pricing in today uh, and the market corrects more but I mean I buy a point but at this point in time I would still remain very selective you know it's not like 2013 in 2013 or even in 2008 Nikunj uh, you know really good quality stocks corrected you know, I know, I mean, a, a companies which were fundamentally well governed, very well run companies were trading below book. Uh, 2013 was a deep value market. 2008 post the financial crisis, it was like throwing the baby out with the bath water, kind of this one. It didn't matter whether it was a, a really good quality company uh, or uh, this one. Uh, I remember so many blue chip stocks correct so much 50 60 70 percent what happened is that that gave an opportunity to buy really good quality stocks the uh, conundrum today is that uh, the good quality stocks even in mid caps and small caps have not corrected as much right so uh, of course in when you uh, have looking at deep cyclical uh, you know you have to be very careful because there's a again uh, you have to, uh, when you are taking a longer term view, you have to look into uh, the other factors as well. Uh, but I would say that this market is nowhere comparable to the 2013 or 2008 markets, number one. Number two is that uh, for fundamental investors, there's always an opportunity in all markets, particularly in these kind of markets where mid caps have corrected by like 50, 60, 70 percent. There will be uh, names that uh, where uh, people would uh, uh, get interested and should get interested. So it's uh, at this point in time, there are a few names which are interesting, but uh, you know I would again not like to go into those names. But uh, we still don't have the wide choice of really good quality companies trading at uh, uh, you know uh, 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 multiples at which you will not. I mean, you will make serious amount of money. That kind of stuff has not yet happened. All right, consensus over BJP's return could be a key risk. That's uh, H. Nimkumar of IFL Institutional Equities.